And now it's time to get back to work. So we have our uh, friend from Arizona come out here, Logan, uh, trailered his car over here with a clutch that he said was bad. We couldn't even get it off the trailer. The clutch was toast. So it was, I don't even know how they got it on the trailer, and uh, but it got here. So we're gonna go ahead and, and do a clutch job for you guys today. So. crawl under here before we get started I got my pan here I'm gonna drain the transmission fluid I'll show you that but we want to pull out these guards this customer had his off here because he has the 845 kit on here uh, so we need to pull this plastic shield off we'll do that first we're gonna pull we can pull that lower mount um, we don't really need to pull the hot pipe necessarily we can operate around that um, it's just a matter of getting getting these these guys off. If you can get a wrench in there or socket without taking the hot pipe off, and then yeah, that's fine. I got my handy dandy Matco impact electric impact, and this is using a 10 millimeter socket. So one, and there's another one. There you go. And then we got these two right here. So we got one. And one here. Alright, so we got the 17 on there. And the breaker. Up oh, and we push. Oh, it already cracked. That was super simple. Ah. Gotta get the pry bar out. Ah, got it, see that? All right, so we'll loosen this guy just so it vents. All right, you know what, let's just take it out. So it's dry, that's normal. So let's save that for now. Put it there. Put your pan under. Grip pan. And it's going to want to shoot out a little bit because we pulled that vent off. I don't know how to get you a better angle with this. Hopefully, I hit my pan because that would suck. Right. Let's see what this fluid looks like. Push it. Man, this tranny fluid from the factory is like water. This shit sucks. So any of you guys are watching this, um, this is something you can do at home is just change your tranny fluid. Uh, I would recommend even off the lot before you even get home, stop and get some, like either some red line or some no-tool gear 300 or something and get this stock stuff out of here. This shit's garbage. It'll be okay for a while, but it is just really, it's pretty nasty garbage, so get it out. Um, we're just gonna let that drip for a while. So what we're gonna do is get a, another bucket for my brake fluid. So what we're gonna do is, this is the bleeder valve, you can see it from on top. And I don't know if it's hard to see. Camera. Okay, right here, there's a clip. So to remove this from this piece, and be very careful, this is plastic, so don't, you know, when you guys start messing with this transmission, a tendency, this, this is a good spot people try to grab onto. Um, you will crack this, you crack this, you need a new uh, slave cylinder, and that really sucks, because they're about 120 bucks. Typically on these clutch changes, these slaves and the throwout bearings last forever. I don't see these going bad too often. So in most cases you can get away with reusing them. Um, but anyways, you need to remove this pin. 
It's just a clip you pull out with the needle nose pliers. And then we're gonna let that, we'll pull this off the shaft, pull it back, and then we'll just let this thing drain down into a bucket. Um, after a while, it'll just keep draining forever. So after a while, what I do is I stick this in a, in a bag, a plastic bag, and zip tie it so the bag's around it, and then I move this up. So I'll, I'll move it up and tie it off somewhere so it's out of the All way. Right, next up, um, actually before, just to make it easier to get to that bleeder valve so I can show you some better footage of that, we're gonna go ahead and pull off the intake so we're just gonna put a bucket under there. This, and guys, um, I thought I rinsed this out before we threw it away and this looked like a great container to cut open. That in there is old milk. And it really freaking stinks. I'll slide that under, under yonder. See? Get that uh, right there. And uh, what we're gonna do, that's not in the right spot still. That's about right. How we're gonna get this angle. So there's this clip I was telling you about. You can kind of see it right there. I'm gonna pull that out. Can't use your fingers because they're not strong enough, but we can use some needle nose pliers. really see what I'm doing. <sighs> Got it. See that clip? That's it. That's her. And I'll show you how to put that back in because the first time I did this I did not know how to put this clip back in and I got frustrated. So we'll keep that up there. And then what we do you know, I'm probably gonna make a mess here because I'm looking, trying to look through the phone and do this at the same time. Is give it a little wiggle and pull. There's a seal there. Nothing should really come out of the transmission, but it will come out of the line. Oh, look at that, I got the bucket in the right spot somehow. So let's, I'm actually gonna move it a little bit there. So now while I do the rest of and installing everything, I'm just gonna let that drain. That's gonna get in the way after a while. So like I said, we'll get a bag, we'll zip tie it, and then we're gonna wedge it up in this corner here out of the way. We're actually gonna end up even removing these two bolts here, and we're gonna move this whole line. We need, the line is perfectly in the way of the transmission. We're gonna move that whole line up. And so this whole thing's gonna get zip tied up over here out of the way. So next up anyways, is pull the battery. So, I didn't think I'd go over this part, but I will because of something someone said to me once is, uh, which terminal do you pull off the battery first? Well, it's always the negative side. So, make sure you pull the negative side off first. So we can loosen both of these. Man, they can crank that one on a little tight. So that, you don't have to take these nuts all the way off, just loose. Loose is the name of the game. All right, so terminal, negative terminal off first. There we go. And this one, positive side off. Just tuck that back there. There. Everyone's gonna freak out. Oh my god, he's laying tools on the engine. Yeah, I did. Okay, so that's that. Battery comes out. I'll move that out of the way. Next up, remove the battery tray. You can have a 12, two 12s here, a 10, a 10, 12. And just when you thought you were done, there's a 12 behind the ECU bracket in the back. Uh, to pull the ECU bracket off, you got this 10 millimeter nut here, 10 millimeter bolt here, and this, even though it has 2016 coil packs, and actually these look like what well, was off the 13. I thought they changed these on the new models, but I guess they didn't. So we'll unclip that. This guy's got his uh, amp fuse deal hooked up right there, so we gotta clip those wires. Clip those wires off. 
when you clip these, just don't clip the wire. Just so we'll just stick that, loop that over it. Get it out of the way for now. So these you slide up. This one, there's like a little button here. You're gonna push this and pull. And then pull up. So, this one out of the way for now. You gotta push it all the way down. And you feel like you wanna break it, but it's not gonna break. There it goes. Man, that was, that was on there. So I like to just push these in the back. I don't need those for now, let's get them out of the way. And then, uh, this one's a little doozy. Oh, my wife got in somehow. So I, get, I always undo this clip. So there's a little clip there, you push one side first, kind of give it a pull. Clip the other side. Anyways, you pull this off the bracket by pinching the tabs and pulling. I'm going to cut, get that off. I'm going to pull that, take that nut off. I'm going to take that 10 millimeter off right here. Take this 10 millimeter off. We're going to pull the whole ECU out and set it over with the battery. And then I'll be back. All right, did a little bit more than I thought I was going to do. Just real quick, I pulled the uh, ECU out. Over there for now. And I took the, the uh, 12 out of here, a 10 out of here, a 12 out of this corner, it's just sitting in there. Put them there, and then there was a 12 millimeter hidden, hidden back. See the hole? Just sits right in there like that. Once this is loose, you're gonna move this down, and then the wire is connected here. So, again, one of those pinch deals, so you pinch the bottom, pinch the top, and push it out. So we remove it from the deal. And battery tray. Now we get all this good stuff here. So now we can go ahead and remove all these wires. So we're gonna unclip everything to move that whole loom over to get it out of the way, as we just don't want it in the way. So. Um, under here, same thing, you can clip one side, clip the other, and, and pop them out. It's very hard to do this with one hand. Yeah, I'll do that with two hands, but I'm going to pull that out, move it over, um, and then just kind of tuck this out of the way. Uh, we're going to remove this clip wire here, and unplug that. I'm gonna unplug this clip and remove. this plugs into the throttle body. So we're gonna remove that clip and move that out of the way as well. So. Okay, so what I did was remove this wire out of this bracket. Um, really, you can leave that there if you want to. Do yourselves a favor and remove this bracket here and this bracket here. Um, there's just one more thing when you start dropping the transmission for it to get stuck on. So just go ahead and remove those. And then the wire that ran into here clips into this guy here, the throttle body. So I pull that out. I basically just moved all the wires and crushed, pulled them over here, crushed them, pulled them here, unhooked these two wires there, and then I moved the throttle body uh, cable back over there. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those two brackets. Um, this one's a 12 here. It just makes it easier getting all the stuff out of here so it's not in the way. And then that one's a 10. The video's probably gonna be long too because there's just a lot to cover in this. I mean, really, there's removal of a transmission can be one video, install of a clutch could be another one, reassemble and adding fluid, brake lines, brake fluid and all that can be a whole nother video. So 
So in the meantime, that's now almost empty, so that actually stopped dripping, which is cool. Uh, next thing in in this deal here that we have to get rid of um, would be removing the uh, the ground cable here, removing the two nut the two bolts which are holding the uh, uh, line here. So we'll take those out. And while we're in here, we'll probably install a braided clutch line. Uh, yeah, I'll just install a braided clutch line for the hell of it, just to do it. And, um, uh, free of charge. It's not another thing people always say, oh, why do you bring your stuff to KDM tuners to have Josh do your, your installs? Because when I'm installing something, I'm looking over the whole car. I'm not just going to throw your clutch in there like some guys. Yeah, I saw oil in the oil filter. I'm going to definitely try to figure out where that came from and why. Um, but then again, I'm looking at this, it's like, it's a stock clutch line. I mean, I have a lot of clutch lines here braided, so they're 50 bucks, but with the kit and the fluid and everything. But since I'm already in here, hell, I might as well just give them a free one, right? So that's why people like bringing their cars to me. So pull that clip out of here. We're gonna save that up here. We're gonna do the same thing on this one. We're gonna pull this clip out. And I'm not exactly sure. Uh-oh. Ah, there you are. Naughty little guy. Put you back up there with your buddy. Um, this one, you're just gonna slide off. Um, I think these are the torque solution deals, so they're going to be rather tight. And we're going to need a screwdriver to pry that over. Um, this one... Man, I hate these. So we're going to pull that C-clip off. I don't think he's really got this installed correctly. But... Supposed to sit all the way on. From my experience, though, with the, the torque solution bushings, is they don't really fit that great. Um, you guys are gonna take the time and money and effort to buy bushings for your car. Uh, go ahead and get the six element ones because they're just a lot better. They fit better. Well, anyways, that should come up rather easy, and it doesn't, so that sucks. pulling these out so we're gonna pull these cables up uh, some guys will pull this whole bracket out and usually what I'll do is I'll pull this whole bracket out anyways um, so you can technically leave those cables in there and pull these three bolts but if you wanted to take these cables out there's these little push lock tabs right where my finger is see those you're gonna push it in with a screwdriver and lift the cable up at the same time there's one on each side so you kind of like push one in and pull it one side up and it'll stay and then you push the other one in and pull it straight up and it comes out. So we might just leave, take the whole bracket off with these ones. Okay, so we got the cables out, put the bracket up there and we stuck it way up in there, tucked it away, out of the way. As you can see, everything is off the transmission now. So we just have to pull, let's go ahead and pull that ground strap while I got you here. And then, uh, guys are on there pretty tight so um, when you guys put these back you can um, I like to put the, the, the bolt back where it belongs on some stuff like here so that way I don't lose it so we'll leave it there but uh, some guys will go in here and and 
sand this area down to make a better contact for the ground. You can do that. It's up to you. So I'll just move that. So everything's off the transmission. Um, one thing we're gonna have to remove, and uh, we can mainly do it from underneath. It's gonna be the vacuum pump. That's this weird black thing that you guys see in the front of the thing. There's two bolts that hold it to the transmission. Yeah, we need to remove that. Um, the starter, we don't necessarily have to remove. We're gonna remove the two bolts that hold the starter and leave the starter in place. Um, there's gonna be only two bolts, one, one right here and one right here on top. So I like to pull those off and also get the starter bolts out. Um, so for, basically what I'm gonna do, pull a uh, vacuum pump. So we're gonna pull this line here with the clamp. We're gonna get this line off the T. Be careful not to crack it, it's plastic here. Pull the vacuum pump out. Um, and then after the vacuum pump's out, we'll remove the two starter bolts completely out. Remove the two transmission bolts completely out. And then uh, from that point forward, we'll go under the car, pull the lower mount, uh, get the jack stand ready, That's uh, and I'll show you where to put that. Um, clean up all the mess that we have under there now, get the brake line with the bag on it and out of the way. Um, and then once all that's done, um, we're gonna put a jack under the transmission before you pull the bolts. And okay, we're gonna lower the whole thing, pull this mount off, and lower the whole thing down to the jack so the engine's sitting on the jack. One thing you can do, um, if you have an 845 intercooler kit, uh, let me show you what you can do here to alleviate that issue. Is um, well, this plate's in the way, of course, but the lower bracket on the 845 cooler kit, uh, can you see it? I can't see anything. Anyways, it's somewhere in there. You just pull the lower bracket mount off of the intercooler so the inner whole intercooler can sag down a little bit. And that way you don't have to remove the piping. So, but this is the charcoal box I'm telling you about. There's two, but it looks to be either a 10 or a 12. I can't really see in there right now. Uh, it's definitely bigger than a 10, so it must be a 12. There's two 12s holding it in, the, in place. Um, you don't need to remove these guys. Uh, the pump comes off together. Um, so you will need, need to remove this clip, uh, this electrical clip. And that one's kind of a bitch. I use pliers sometimes. And then on the other side, after you get those, all that transmission bolt off, there's one, two, three, four, five bolts underneath. Um, but we'll get into that. We're gonna pull that. All right, back again. We left off here. We got that all the way. Everything's cleared up. I got the uh, charcoal can out, or the uh, vacuum pump out of there. Uh, everything on top's good to go. Just gonna have to pull those two nuts, bolts, like I said, right there, and the starter bolts. And that's it. Um, fast forward and did some stuff without filming because. Uh, it's too hard to do and hold the camera so uh, what we did is this bracket here is bolted to here with the 12 millimeter we pull that uh, this wheel sensor or the uh, ABS sensor is in, in here the 10 millimeter bolt we pull that out um, we pull this was a 19 millimeter and a 17 millimeter to pull these bolts out um, and then uh, we also pulled the, on the driver's side, we pulled the, the axle nut off. And I believe that is uh, 32 millimeter um, socket to do that. And um, to pull the axle out of the transmission. Now to get the axle out of the transmission on the driver's side on an automatic is very easy. On a manual, it's, there's a little trick to it. Um, you can't get a, a, you know, your typical pickling fork in there, there's not enough room. Um, you can get a screwdriver in there to try to pop it out. Uh, again, there's not much room for leverage. So what I did, and I'll go over it with you guys real quick. What I did first is obviously detach everything like I just showed you on this side. Um, and this will have a castle nut for the, uh, the end links right here, the um, 
type for. God damn, I can't think right now. Uh, the steering is for the steering rack, basically. I think the tie rod ends or whatever. I can't think. Uh, it has a cotter pin in there. You pull that cotter pin out, 17 millimeter, back it up all the way so the nuts flush with the, the thread or the, uh, the bolt sticking out here. And when it's in that hole, you're just gonna take a hammer and hit this flush straight down. Just keep beating on it, beating on it, beating on it until you hear it pop and that'll clear the seat and this just falls out. So I put the nut back on there just so I don't lose it. Um, it's really easy to do. This axle, as you can see, we didn't pull all the way out of the hub. We don't need to. So I'll get on there and show you. Um, we pulled the axle out of there and it's basically you just leave this axle in like this. So but let me get under the car and show you what I did or how I do it. Okay, this is going to be very hard to see. I don't know how to zoom out with the iPhone, so bear with me. I'm on my back here. So the axle has, uh, so the axle goes into the half shaft, which is here. The half shaft is what goes into the transmission. Um, there's three 14 millimeter bolts and it bolts right here to the motor. Okay, so you gotta pull those out. And then uh, on this side, so there's the hole for the, where the, the axle goes. Um, when you pull these three bolts out, pop this up off. Uh, when you lower this guy down, it's automatically wanna pull this out. This doesn't pop out. This just slides in and out real easy. So we just slide it out enough um, to dismount it from the transmission. So we have enough room there to maneuver the transmission now. So that's out. Now to get what I'm saying to get the driver's side axle out, as you can see, to get a screwdriver up in this spot and try to pop it, it's impossible. On the automatic transmission, they made a window here for you. So you can get a, a tool up in there and, and pop it really easy. This one they didn't. So what we do is take my handy dandy thick screwdriver that I grinded down to fit past the pin. So in the differential, there's a pin and you're probably not gonna be able to see this in there and I don't know how to get light. Okay, you kind of see the pin in there. See it running vertical? Well, the other axle sits right there. So what you do is you get your screwdriver. I don't know if I can do this while I'm filming here. Get your screwdriver and you go right down the side of the pin. So my screwdriver is slightly curved. I curved it a little bit to fit around that pin. Anyways, you slide it right around that pin and the butt end of the axle sits right next to that pin. So I'll see on the left of the pin, there's an opening right there. You're gonna slide your screwdriver right there and that's gonna hit the very end of the axle. And then you just give your screwdriver a levity tap, 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 and it'll pop the axle right out. Do not bash on it, do not bang on it, do not scar anything. Be very careful when you put anything in this hole. You do not wanna contaminate anything. Uh, just be super, super care and aware of what you're doing. You don't want to scarf any of those teeth in there. That is your differential. So you can either go on this side of it or that side of it. You're going to get a screwdriver and tap the axle out and pull it right out the other side. That's the trick to doing this. Okay. Now what we're going to do, got all that out of the way. Um, we're all clear up in this area here. Everything looks good. Your hard line is tucked up in a way, so we can probably get that out. Um, we're not. We're gonna try to do this without removing any of the intercooler piping. Typically, I put a jack stand with a block of wood right where this hot pipe goes, um, or like right where this bolt goes. We could probably still do that. What I'll probably end up doing is getting a block of wood with a jack under the oil pan and hold the engine up that way. And then we'll um, also put a uh, transmission transmission jack under the transmission, and then release uh, the transmission side mount. All right, guys. So what I had to do is take off the hot pipe, and then I just loosened the cold pipe, and that way I can use the jack. Uh, it'll only drop the engine about, gosh, maybe. 
quarter of an inch, half inch, so it won't even move that much, but that's where I want the jack to hold the engine. Uh, that way it gives me enough room to maneuver around in there and get my transmission jack under there. This is just the jack I have there for now. I haven't undone the transmission completely. I did pull some of the bolts out. Um, just out of the way, I've left uh, one, two bolts there and two on top. The rest of them are out. Uh, what we're gonna do next is I have the jack holding the transmission up and we're gonna pull these two bolts out, which will separate the mount from the tranny mounts. I guess it separates the two. I don't know how to say that correctly. In order to do that, there's a cap inside the fender that goes here. We pop that cap out and voila, there's those two bolts. We're gonna pull those bolts out right now. Um, to pull those bolts out, I think it's a 14 millimeter and they're gonna be, if I'm not mistaken, these ones are almost 80 pounds. So you're gonna use a breaker bar with an extension on it um, to get those out. So I'm gonna do that now. Uh, unfortunately, I can't hold the camera and all my camera equipment's not here. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, pulled those two bolts. And bolts are out. Jack's on the transmission. And jack sand is in place. So what we want to do now is make sure our jack is in place of where we want it. Did kind of move a little bit because this hose is in our way. And now we're gonna lower jack sand motor down and we're watching everything and it is completely sitting on that jack the whole motor next up so now what we're going to do is we're going to stick it get this prepped ready to come out i use a harbor freight uh, transmission jack for this it works really well um, the motor will stay in place on that jack stand and uh, we'll get that out one thing you guys are going to want to do or you have to do on this one and it might have been wise for me to loosen the bolts before i did this we want to take this mount off the transmission. That's the only way it's going to clear dropping it this way. So I think those are 17 millimeters. Uh, we're going to pull those off. There's three of them. So there's one here, here, and back there. And we'll pull this whole mount off. Uh, and then I'll get the uh, jack stand or the jack uh, transmission jack, put it into the car. And let's get prepared to get this thing out. All right, next step is, uh, you can see right there, this is where the uh, starter bolt was, starter bolt, trans bolt, trans bolt. You can see how it's starting to separate in there. We've got all the bolts out and the whole thing. Um, so it's just sitting in there with the shaft. One thing um, that I didn't do that probably help you guys out is put it in neutral. Well, I don't know what happened there. Try to keep this thing in neutral. Um, when you pull it apart, if it's binding, like it won't come out, it's just jammed in there, it's probably in gear. So just try, just flip this guy around. I can't remember where the gears are on this, but I think that's neutral. So you wanna have this in neutral. Um, so we're gonna lower the trans jack to lower the transmission. Um, and then when we install it, you're gonna make sure it's in neutral as well. So have a trans jack up in there holding that thing in. And you see it's starting to separate already. This next step, uh, obviously I can't do with one hand, so I'm gonna have to cut back again. Sorry about that. But the next step is lower the transmission. Um, the transmissions, as we lower this, it's gonna fall this way. It's not gonna just lower evenly. The motor's gonna stay still and the transmission's gonna drop this way. And it's gonna get to a certain point and it's just gonna keep going. So it's gonna nose dive, it's just gonna rotate all the way down and then to a point where you're gonna have to, if the car is not high enough, 
Um, we'll have to pull the transmission off the jack. Uh, if the car is high enough, we just roll it right out the wheel well. Um, I don't think I have it high enough, so I'll probably have to me mess with that, but that's the next step. So I'll show you when that's out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is what I'm talking about. The transmission's down off the car, obviously. Um, it's too big to fit anywhere, so I'm gonna have to roll it off jack onto the floor and pull it out. All right, pulled the transmission off, clutch material everywhere. On the floor, in the bell housing. This clutch has been destroyed. Yeah, this makes a mess for me to clean up. So, we'll inspect the housing, clean that out. I'm gonna roll the transmission off the jack because I didn't jack the car high enough. Usually, we can slide it out right through here. But, uh, not today. So, I'll, I'll come back. All right, so, I'm not sure how this clutch failed, but it's obviously it failed. Um, it's just clutch material everywhere, look at this shit. Which, in all honesty, makes for a horrible fucking job to do this because this shit's like fiberglass, it gets everywhere. So let's pull this bad boy off. These are 12 millimeters. Um, usually you want to do these in order, a certain order pretty much. I'll show you when we install it again. This thing is fucking destroyed, so it doesn't matter. One thing I wanted to show you guys too is, check this out. So, most of you won't even know what the hell I'm doing. Um, this is a dual mass flywheel. Um, it actually has, it's spring loaded. So there's springs in there and the disc itself is not sprung. So what happens is they put springs inside the flywheel and that helps absorb the shock when you shift into gear and you know let out the clutch. So it's a little easier on the transmission on the internals. Um, but they fail so when you guys buy clutches the flywheels on these are, are not serviceable they are meant to be replaced and they're about nine hundred dollars a pop but you're not supposed to be able to move it like that that right there there's springs in there i shouldn't even be able to move it with two hands um, so that is completely destroyed so i'm i'm assuming that the flywheel went bad um, and then just the clutch ate itself to death. So that's what I'm guessing happened here. Uh, but it's just a guess. All right, check it out. I found the mount. Okay, so let's get this thing off. It's gonna suck tonight. I'm using a little pry bar uh, to pry this thing off. three pins on these things and sometimes I do like to get stuck. I'm trying to get to a spot without rotating the, the rotating 
rotate the motor a little bit. <laughs> I've never seen that. Look at that. It's gone. I'm gonna save this. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is supposed to have clutch material on these fins. I mean, these, the com material is completely, completely fucking gone. I have, these guys see that? Wow. Whoops. Wow. Good job, dude. I'm gonna keep that as a souvenir. And, uh, Here's his clutch. Yeah, the pressure plate failed. It's actually, the pressure plate's still in pretty good shape. Get rid of that. Here's your clutch, ready? There it is. <laughs> All right, so to get this off is a, uh, that's a six point. I forgot what size it is, but I have, I have to go get that. But uh, yeah, see what I was talking about? You're not supposed to be able to move it that easy. This, this thing's fried. So let's pull that off. We'll clean it all out. And uh, let's get this thing back together and out of here, huh? So the tool needed for this job is a T55. Uh, this thing has seen better days, but it's lasted me a long time. So on these, um, technically you're not supposed to reuse them. Uh, these are pretty sturdy bolts. Uh, I, I use these, I don't really reuse these too often. I have a whole bunch of these new. Uh, they're cheap, I think it's like $3 for all of them or something. So I'll just get new ones if you can. Uh, I use ARP for my stuff too. <sighs> what a mess. All this shit I don't want, want to touch. Okay, we're gonna blow this out. Get the rest of the shit out of here. There's his clutch. The whole clutch, nothing but the clutch. And that shit sucks to have around. So let me clean the rest of it off. We're gonna have to actually use some chemicals on the axle to get that cleaned up and uh damn that really sucks you know all right so time to put this bad boy back in uh we're gonna put the new asco flywheel in uh, before we do that let's just give everything a little splash down make sure everything's clean So 
I put one in just to hold it for now. Just so it doesn't fall on my head. So, uh, it doesn't say anything in the manual about using thread locker, like Loctite. I like to use red on the crank, and I like to use blue on the outside. Uh, blue that goes well with aluminum, so you're not going to destroy these holes for the pr uh, pressure plate. Um, but red is a lot stronger, and we like to use this on the crank bolts because we do not want the flywheel coming out. Just put a little coat on there and thread her in. And we just go around each one and do that. You want to make sure, even though it's on the thread there, when it goes in the hole, if there's any excess, you want to blow that out. Um, if that stuff slings all over the place and gets on the surface of the clutch, um, it will suck. So that could affect um, the performance of your clutch. I had to install the clutch once and I ran into that same problem but with ARP lube. Um, I didn't get all the lube out of the fucking hole. I didn't get all the lube out of the fucking hole. And it got onto the clutch surface and caused some slippage issues. So don't do that. Take the one that was holding it at the first place back out. <clears throat> Put a little Loctite on there. Loctite. And get our last. Oh. Liberal amount of. Loctite on there. Okay. So that's on there. Um, we do not use an impact on this. In fact, these get torqued down to 55 pounds um, in a star pattern. So you're going to start on one. We're just going to snug all these up first. So. Alright, in order to get this done without the flywheel turning, we need to get a wedge in here uh, to have them up top. And then we can hold it like this or like that. So let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can get one of these. Sometimes it's nice to have a buddy helping you with this part. Alright guys, I don't know why the camera just stopped recording. I guess that at a certain time it just stops, so that sucked. Um, the last thing you guys saw was me tightening the uh, flywheel bolts down. Um, the flywheel bolts were 55 pounds of torque with some red Loctite on there. Um, we used an alignment tool with the, the uh, clutch plate or disc in there. Um, one thing I did mention that you guys did not hear, I'll have to go over it again. 
is this insert center hub insert here. There's a male and a female side. The male side always faces the motor um, inside. So the female side always faces outside. It does not matter which way the clutch basket or the spring basket is facing. That center insert is the most important part. If that male part's facing out towards the transmission, it's gonna bind with the slave or the throw out bearing and it's not gonna do anything. As soon as you press that clutch and try to force it, you're gonna explode the, the uh, slave or the bearing itself and you'll have to take the transmission out and order that part, which is $120. So don't do that. Make sure that male piece is facing the motor. Um, when we put the pressure plate bolts in, uh, we use blue Loctite at 22 pounds. Um, that's what I did on these. You can go 25, 22 to 25 pounds is good. That's all you really need. Uh, make sure when you tighten them, you go in a star pattern. So I'll start here, then you're gonna go up there, then across, 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 whatever. Uh, then make one final pass again, just checking, double checking all your torque, make sure they're all correct. Um, and then I took the alignment tool out. So um, the alignment tool really is just there to center everything. So when you go to put your transmission back in, pull this, pull this back out and the uh, spline is centered um, when you put the tranny in. So that's what, where we're at now. So the whole, the whole thing is in. So it looks good. So next thing to do right now is going to be put the transmission in um, with the jack. And All right, so now we got the transmission back in. My phone was messing up, so um, we got all those torqued down to about 36 pounds. Um, your starter bolt, your two starter bolts right there. One, two, that bolt, and that bolt, 36 pounds. Uh, we got these guys in here at 80 pounds and those guys right there are probably due to about 60 pounds, 555 pounds probably. So this is your transaxle mounting insulator to transaxle mounting support bracket fixing bolts, 79 pounds. So those are those two long bolts. Mm -hmm bracket to two body fixing bolts. We didn't mess with those. Engine mounting support bracket, engine support bracket nut. So 47. So this, this one right here is gonna be your lower dog bone, the bolt that goes through. It's gonna be 47 to 61. Um, looks like the rest of them, you just 47 pounds to the, to the body. And the trans, do those big 17 bolts, 47, I guess. Man, yeah, we'll do that. Do these 47. I'll we'll just keep them at 47. These ones, if you take these out, 47, 47. Um, that should be good enough. And then uh, putting everything back is just going in reverse of what you saw earlier. Uh, so you just got to button up the hot pipe, clean up some tools real quick, and uh, get the axles in. Okay, we're gonna put this uh, tranny mount on. It only goes one way, so you can play with it and finagle it. And it doesn't line up to any holes, you got it wrong. So there's three bolts, they're 14 millimeter. Um, you're gonna wanna just, like 30 pounds. I've tried to make these too tight before and strip the shit out of one of them, so I had to re-thread it. I think on this one, the bracket probably says 47 pounds in the book. But Everyone keeps calling me while I'm trying to film. Ah, that's snug enough. Whoa, that's the wrong bolt. The wrong bolt in there. What in the hell? So what I'm doing now, are those, I didn't mention it before, is putting the bracket in for the dog bone mount. It has a torque solutions uh, mount. So it's pretty nice. So if you ever get, um, you know, people talk about the dealership and how they don't like working on fixed up cars and whatnot. And, 
Uh, there's a bunch of nobody likes them because of that. Well, there is some validity to that. Is when people start working on their own cars, they do so many funky things, and it they base all of their stuff off of a time deal. Um, and uh, when you start getting all these aftermarket parts in here, even though they're cool, it does take a little bit more time to do certain things. So a lot of dealers, the guys don't want to work on the cars because they don't make any extra money for, for spending the extra time on those. And everything that they have set up uh, is based on um, a rate. We're gonna try to do it on this bolt here because I cannot get to the other one. And then these guys are 17 as well, but we're not gonna go 60. We'll keep those around 50 pounds. Okay, now we got that done. You gotta put the axles in, and then the underside of the car is done. All right, this one is gonna be a little tricky to get back in. It's the way I did it. Uh, we're gonna lift this whole control arm up here. And, uh, the axle in there in the hole and when we push this back in there in now we're gonna put the three bolts that hold the the uh, transaxle or the axle in here these ones only get torqued down to like maybe 35 to 40 I mean, you don't want to do these too tight Forty two. Okay. Okay. All right. So that one's in, and that axle's in. 
That's easy. All right, now what we gotta do is button up the wheel here. Get all this back to how it's supposed to be. So that just sits right in there. And this one just looks like they have it this way. Now, so this, these are a 17 on one side and a 19 on the other. Since we have our compressor out. Bent it a little bit. Alright. Bend the pin over itself. That one down. Like so. Got the bracket on there, everything looks good. And then to tighten the suspension, as some like to say, you gotta get some, a couple Uggle Lugs on there. If you don't know what an Uggle Lug is, I'm about to show you. Ready? my wrench. Now when you do this make sure you gotta when you take these out you gotta make sure you put this uh, knuckle all the way against the strut or make sure you take notes of how it's aligned because this will ruin your alignment um, as far as camber goes. I set all of my camber in all the way um, so that's what I'm gonna do on this one. or ugly lugs. I guess that's what they call them. Alright, this one we have the axle completely out. Uh, so that's this bad boy right here. Now make sure everything's clean, no junk on the end of this thing. I'm gonna slide it right in there into the tranny. Just slide right in there and give it a little, that's it. You got a click and it's in all the way. And get this in, bend it down and get her lined up in the hole. So it's a little complicated sometimes, but if you do this enough, it ain't no thing.
bolts in there. The strut bolts that hold the knuckle to the strut. Got the wheel speed sensor. Go ahead and put that in. Snug, nothing too crazy. Go ahead. Oh no! Shit, oh no! Man, fucking mount's dying here. Ah, oh, there we go. Bracket back on for the brake line. axle nut in here. This one never was crushed. So technically this thing should be like 120 pounds of torque. Um, we just use our compressor air gun and uh, max her out on there so we'll just let her run on it. Just go ahead and get these uh, uh, knuckle bolts in. So again, pushing these all the way in. They just need to be tight, so crank them on there pretty good. Now as far as the axle nut goes. That one we need to crank it on there just like that and then we're gonna pinch it here. Okay. It looks like they tried to hammer that in. Didn't do a good job. So you wanna take like a punch or something. There's like these little tabs right here. See these right here, there's tabs. You want to bend bend these in that way, bend that one that way, or at least one bend one of them that way in. So it's like maybe that one. Ouch. There we go. You see that will do the trick. Last but not least, get our tie rod ends in. This one. There we go. Snug her down. These don't have to be super tight. You just tighten them as tight as it'll go by hand. And then you just line up the hole with the cotter pin. There, and you get your cotter pin, wherever your cotter pin is. is. Let me straighten this one out. This one's a little bit bent. You can get new cotter pins, they're super cheap. Um, these are reusable, you can reuse these. 
So put this cotter pin in. There we go. And we're gonna bend one up and one. And one down and around. So one thing you guys wanna do when you're messing with all these is check your heat shields too. Sometimes they get bent and they'll, they'll scratch the rotor. I know it won't scratch it, it'll just make a noise. You'll never know what it is. It'll just be like a shh, 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 shh noise. I'm gonna drive you nuts. All right. There we go. We got the axles in. We got everything buttoned up on the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and do that now. I don't know if you guys need to see this part. Uh, you're just putting those brackets in. You're putting your, your cable lines in. Uh, your shift linkage lines in, rerouting the wires. Um, we're gonna hook up your, we're gonna hook up the uh, the bleeder and all that good stuff on there. And um, well, I think when we jump back to you, I'll show you how to bleed the clutch. All right, for the uh, bleeding of the clutch, um, we topped off the reservoir, and we'll keep checking that to make sure that doesn't run dry with Motul 5.1. Uh, we put the steel braided line in there. Um, I put a speed bleeder bleeder down here and I cracked it over a quarter of an inch and put the hose on here. I'm running the bag with the hose on it. Uh, we can put it right here so I can see it. Put the clutch here. It's gonna, when you push it in, it's gonna hit the floor, right? So you just gotta pull it back up, push it, pull it back up. And then keep doing that. Maybe it'll get harder. You know, while you're doing that, this line, see, it's got air and shit coming out of it. I can feel it here. bleeder off. Um, now don't be careful not to crank because again it's connected to a plastic piece here. If you crank it too much you will crack the plastic. So you gotta be very careful on tightening this. Um, it just really needs to be nice and snug. You don't want to over tighten these. It has a sealant on the threads that we use. Um, you don't want to over tighten them because it will, you have a steel bleeder into an aluminum housing. The aluminum housing will uh, warp or distort, distort itself if you crank it down too tight and uh, it will leak. So I've had that happen. And we use these speed bleeder bags because oh, this one leaks. Well, we like using these because they're disposable. This one leaks. And 
always, as always, you want to touch around, feel around, wipe down, spray down, whatever you got to do. Just make sure nothing leaks. So far, everything feels great. All right, last thing to do after bleeding the clutch, got the battery in, intake in, everything's buttoned up. Final touches would be put the training fluid back in the car. And that's what we're gonna do now. So, I wanna make sure that the drain plug is tight, because we're done with that. Okay. And then uh, what we wanna do is make sure you get your drain bucket under here. There it is. There you go. And then uh, the Motul in. So the Motul oil is nice because it has a spout. Whereas Redline, you need a pump. So we don't need a pump with the Motul oil. We literally put it up in there. I don't know if you can, you can see. There we go. Literally put the spout in the hole, like so, and pour it in. And just squeeze it in. Just keep pumping. Alright. One down. Now we're using LS. So I didn't have the Gear 300. I think I mentioned that before. Um, one of the downsides with LS is the price. Um, typically, the LS fluid is a lot more expensive. Well, not typically, it is a lot more expensive. All right. Two gear 300 LS can Leaders down. Let's open up the third. This one we don't have to shove all the way up the top because it's not going to take the whole thing. It's probably really close now. So we'll see how much we can get in there. Here it comes. See that? It's been dripping out. Yeah. Um, let me take it out and see how much it streams out. See how much it pours out? You see that? See that? That right there is full. So let's give it a couple more squirts. And we're going to go ahead and plug her up. All right, and then you give her a little snuggy brew. Doesn't have to be tight, guys. Not too tight. Just like a drain plug. That's enough to get the crush washer crushed, and that's it. Well, that's it on the clutch install. Uh, took about seven hours to do, and a typical guy could do it in about six. It just took a little longer for us as I was trying to stop and film things in between. Um, there was a lot of content that I left out uh, just because I was juggling uh, with the camera really. I didn't have any of my mounts and all my cameras that I did have uh, were evacuated so I didn't have them back here yet. Uh, so I decided to, this car had to get done so I decided to do everything on the iPhone and just kind of go with it. So. Um, if I left out any information or any content that you guys didn't see and have questions about, 
or if there's anything that you was confusing at all, uh, please message me and uh, I will get you some information on, on that topic or how to do whatever it is you need to get done. All in all, everything went pretty well. With the kits that we sell, it's pretty straightforward. There's not much you can screw up. Um, if you find yourself in the bind in the middle of an install, message us on Facebook and we respond pretty damn quick. So uh, we get a lot of messages every day of people installing stuff that are stuck some, on some part of it and they message us, we help them out as we can. So um, you can find us anywhere, you know, kdmtuners.com. You can hit us on the contact that goes to our email. I'm pretty responsive on that. Um, like I said, Facebook, Instagram. You can drop a comment below here, uh, and we will, you know, answer your questions. And then, uh, other than that, guys, that, that was that's it for now. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your weekend and uh, be safe out there. Okay, don't burn. <laughs> Later, guys.